2012 Lawrence City Commission meeting. We're going to begin this evening with a proclamation and that's to proclaim the month of February 2012 as Career and Technical Education Month. Is there a speaker here on that this evening? Oh, great, hiding back. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, my uh, name is Jennifer Flippen. I'm the Associate Director of Education at Pinnacle Career Institute here in Lawrence. Thank you for having us here tonight for the proclamation regarding career and technical education. Lawrence uh, campus is one of four Pinnacle Career Institutes in the area and we serve uh, adults and career education in Lawrence and the surrounding areas in the fields of medical assisting, massage therapy, wind turbine technician, and health information technician. I've brought with me here tonight just a couple students and they're gonna just explain why they chose career education. Uh, Tyler? I'm Tyler Hansen, and I'm a professional fitness trainer. Before going to Pinnacle Career Institute, I worked at a factory. Um, I realized it's not what I want to do. August 16th, 2010, I began the personal trainer program. June 2011th, through the school's program, I went to the Professional Fitness Institute in Las Vegas, and I took the test uh, to become National Strength and Conditioning Association certified. And only a year and a half later, now I'm doing what I went to school to do and love every, every minute of it. I'd like to say thanks to Pinnacle Career Institute for helping me attain the knowledge and skills to have a career and not just a job. I am uh, Joseph Landry. I, uh, I actually have two uh, degrees. Uh, one of them is in philosophy and theology, and so I can either teach or um, write books, which I did neither of them, so I spent the last six years uh, bartending, and that's, I guess, what a four-year degree in philosophy uh, will get you. So <laughs> I needed, <laughs> so I needed, uh, you know, find a specific, um, you know, purpose for it. So I already did the four years of, uh, it, was, it was like four years of uh, partying, uh, pretty much, so <laughs> let's, let's be honest, that's what college is. So I'm done with my rite of passage, and, you know, I'm 30 now, so it's time to, you know, uh, find a specific um, reason to be out in the workforce. Instead of having a job, I was looking for a career, and uh, that's what I really wanted. So I'm a current student at Pinnacle Career Institute, and uh, you know, definitely uh, found uh, my calling, what I really want to do, and um, and I'm glad that I didn't join the uh, overwhelming statistic of all the other um, you know four-year dropouts and dump you know forty thousand dollars into something that. Um, I didn't uh, go into, so I'm really happy to be that uh, a career institute exists. I'm really happy to be a part of that. I appreciate it. Great. I'll uh, read the proclamation, and then uh, I'll uh, read the proclamation, and then present it to you here. All right. Whereas February 1st through 29th, 2012, has been designated Career and Technical Education Month by the Association for Career and Technical Education, and whereas profound economic and technological changes in our society are rapidly reflected in the structure and nature of work, thereby placing new and additional responsibilities on our educational system, and whereas career and technical education provides Americans with a school-to-career connection and is a backbone of a strong, well-educated workforce which fosters productivity in business and industry and contributes to America's leadership in the international marketplace. And whereas career and technical education gives high school students experience in practical, meaningful applications of basic skills such as reading, writing, and mathematics, thus improving the quality of their education, motivating, motivating potential dropouts, and giving all students leadership opportunities in their fields and in their communities. And whereas the ever increasing uh, cooperative efforts of career and technical educators, business and industry stimulate the growth and vitality of our local economy and that of the entire nation by preparing graduates for career fields forecast to experience the largest and fastest growth in the next decade. Now therefore I, Aaron Cromwell, Mayor of the City of Lawrence, Kansas, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2012 to be Career and Technical Education Month. And uh, next up this evening, we have a recognition. It is uh, the 25th anniversary of the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods. Hello. Um, 
As you all know, my name is Gwen Klingenberg, and I am the president of the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods. And I would like to invite everybody, all the city commissioners and staff, because as you know, land spends a lot of time visiting with everybody, and also the community, because everybody lives in a neighborhood. And we are having our 25th anniversary, and we are celebrating on um, Kansas Day, actually, because that's when it got started, January 29th, which is this coming Sunday, 6.30 at the North Lawrence Depot uh, Visitor Center. We also started a few, uh, couple of years ago an Outstanding Neighborhood Service Award, which we think that our two honorees this time are extremely important for our 25th <coughs> anniversary because Steve Lopes actually was one of the people who actually started <coughs> LAN, and of course we all know Senator Marcy Francisco who has been very important in neighborhood issues. So I'd like you to come, and I'd also like you to take the time and visit and meet with and thank our honorees. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll read the uh, recognition here now and present it to you. Whereas the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods was created to bring neighborhoods together to work with the City of Lawrence on long-range planning issues and daily life issues that affect all neighborhoods and residents of Lawrence, Kansas, and whereas the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods has been working for 25 years to provide timely feedback to city officials on neighborhood concerns and issues regarding city policies, services, and programs, and whereas the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods supports individual neighborhoods and works to ensure each neighborhood has the support of the community as well as all neighborhoods working together to ensure the quality of life vital to Lawrence to continue to grow while maintaining each neighborhood's unique character. Now therefore I, Aaron Cromwell, Mayor of the City of Lawrence, Kansas, along with my fellow City com Commissioners, recognize the 25th anniversary of the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods on January 29, 2012. We will move on now to our consent agenda. All matters uh, on consent are considered under one mo motion and enacted by one motion. There's no separate discussion of those items. If separate discussion is desired, that item will need to be pulled off of consent to be considered separately. Is there an item on consent that a member of the commission would like considered <coughs> separately? Is there an item uh, on consent that a member of the public would like pulled for separate discussion? If not, uh, then I would like to add to consent two uh, claims to 224 vendors totaling $1,249,994.68 with the addition of claims as your motion to accept consent. So moved, sec motion made by Vice Mayor Shum, seconded by Commissioner Amix. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5-0. City Manager's Report, Dave. Good evening. Mayor, members of the Commission, I'd like to go through uh, this week's report quickly. On an annual basis, we put together a report that indicates the number of residential lots that are available for uh, a building permit and in which um, areas in the community additional infrastructure is needed according to our subdivision regulations and infrastructure requirements. You see a copy of the uh, updated annual report for, for 2011. Not too many surprises. Um, again, we've had you know, a slowdown in residential activity. We've also had a slowdown in uh, subdivision uh, creation. But we think that this is a valuable tool, not only for city planning purposes, which we use it in a number of different departments, but also for information to the community. As uh, you know, we're going to have a, a public meeting to discuss the possibility of relocating uh, transit offices in a uh, downtown hub for our transit system at the Santa Fe station. That meeting is on uh, February the, uh, the 1st, Wednesday evening from 5 to 7 at the Santa Fe station there on East 7th Street. Uh, Bob and, and Diane and others are, are working on that. As you know from our budget discussions, we've uh, made a, a big emphasis of uh, working to reduce our health care costs through increased uh, employee activity and focus on their, uh, their health. We have uh, become a, a participant in the Work Well Kansas.
program a number of other entities in the state are participating with that we've also um, had a successful launch of our well care clinic at uh, Lawrence Memorial Hospital that allows uh, city employees and uh, designated um, individuals under that city employees coverage to uh, participate in the in the city clinic at that location and we're getting good responses from employees and others that they think that's going to be a valuable tool for them again our purpose is not only providing uh, the increased health care opportunity for employees but we think it's also going to help us contain some health care costs so we're excited to see that that is improving and the final item on, on this week's report is to some extent a work in progress but we wanted you to see it um, we've put together an inventory of city-owned properties Commissioner Dever um, made inquiry about that issue I believe when we were talking about the uh, common ground proposal the um, the farming uh, the uh, uh, the gardening on certain uh, vacant city city plots and the question was well what does the city own and um, are we sure that we don't have um, uh, spare property and uh, you see a list, a list there and uh, we both got it in a spreadsheet a listing of the property and then also a, a map and you can zoom in and out uh, we've got quite a bit of property under city ownership and uh, we've gone through it um, continuing to look at it I think I'd indicated that the property that the city owns at the far west terminus of Bob Billings Parkway now is likely to be in our kind of spare inventory I think we want to wait until that intersection that interchange is, is constructed and we've kept you all um, advised about that status um, that construction may happen in the next few years uh, the property would probably be part of the road project but once that road project is completed um, I think we may be able to look and see whether that property could, could move we've also got some property around town that we've acquired for uh, drainage purposes uh, residences and such that have taken on too much water and the best solution is just to buy the property out um, and in many cases we don't want that property to be rebuilt on we don't want to pay for it twice essentially so we've got a few of those tracks some of those tracks are going to be involved in the uh, the community gardening project as well but we're continuing to look at this and see if there's some excess inventory in the in the city uh, 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 ownership be happy to respond to any questions um, comments that you all might have thanks Dave questions I could ask about the mowing but I think I'll leave that alone the mowing of all this ground I think I'll leave that alone no, the, the mowing the, the care of it is uh, yeah it's a challenge it's a, but it's a, it's been a good exercise for us to look at probably I'll look at it on a periodic basis 355 parcels of uh, different size and configuration so yeah. I'm just curious the uh, the individual listings are these whenever it's just not continuous because a lot of them look like there's multiple listings on particular property that's I think that's correct which is there's a number of them where um, they're just it's just the designation that the county puts on the parcel mm -hmm. so some, some of those parcels could be very large some of them could be small and they could be within one park could have three four yes, parcels that's, that okay. is correct Great. Thank you very much. Moving on to regular agenda. The first item up is renaming a portion of 11th Street. Chuck's just going to provide a brief introduction to uh, this item and let the commission know the, the notification that we have uh, provided to uh, impacted uh, property owners. <clears throat> Basically, the proposal here is to rename 11th Street from Mississippi Street West to Missouri Street as Fambro Drive. Um, we notified all the owners along this property or along this corridor. None of them are addressed off of 11th Street. Um, the only one that was addressed off of 11th Street was the fraternity Delta Tau Delta. Um, they are not included within the area that we've defined for the uh, renaming. Um, we sent letters out to everybody, both residents and property owners, several of them are rentals. Um, we heard no responses, so um, our recommendation is to go ahead and um, have the commission authorize the uh, city to go ahead and rename um, this section of 11th Street to Fambo Drive, and we can answer any questions. Questions? <clears throat> we will notify all the agencies and everybody that needs to be notified, post office and stuff, of this and emergency services. So. Um, and we'll put up the street name sign so there shouldn't be any confusion as to where Fambo Drive is located. Okay. Costs associated with the You know, you probably a couple hundred dollars in sign Truth. materials. Nothing significant. Just as much. Okay. Very good. Any questions? Just one real quick. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard anything back from emergency services. Is there being a problem 
of, of any kind. Shouldn't be. Thank you. Public comment on this? I'm Robert Lewis, 1105 West Hills Parkway live almost directly across from where Don Fimbro lived, built his house. You're proposing to, from Mississippi to Missouri, Don Fimbro Drive, from Missouri to West Campus Drive, 11th Street, from 11th, one block West Hills Terrace, one block West Hills Parkway. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I spent a lot of time in my yard You'd be surprised how many people stop and ask me streets and particularly directions because of the differences in the names. And you're just adding confusion to the situation. I have nothing against Don Fanger. It's the principle of it. Confusion. Little wonder corporate America drives by Lawrence, Kansas, goes to Topeka, Manhattan, or Olathe, or Shawnee Mission. Thank you. For the public comment. I'm Judy Ballone with Visiting Nurses here in Lawrence. Um, I'm here to, as a proponent for naming Fambro Drive. Um, it's of no concern to me whether it's between Missouri and Mississippi or whether it's 11th Street. It makes sense to me, but um, I wanted to just say and publicly say that Don Fambro was a strong proponent for the community, and you all know about his, uh, him as a sports legend, but as a citizen and as a volunteer and a fundraiser, he for the last seven years of his life was um, a strong proponent for visiting nurses and the services we provide, and it would not be, um, I think appropriate for me and um, I think probably half the room here uh, to come in and uh, talk about how much in support we are of recognizing him. So thank you for your time. My name is David Lawrence. Uh, I've been associated with Don Fambro for 35 years, I believe. Um, He's been a part of this community since 1945, I believe, when he came back. Um, his loyalty and, and love for Lawrence uh, sometimes defies logic to where you would think the man didn't have any common sense. Uh, he grew up in the state of Texas, uh, was a Texas high school football player of the year, went to University of Texas, and just because of his commanding officer, Ray Evans, a KU legend, had asked him to just come and look at Lawrence one time before you go back to, uh, to Austin after the war was over, because they served in the war together. And, and uh, as soon as he uh, came on campus and looked over the community, he decided this is where he wanted to be. Um, he's served in numerous capacities as a student athlete, a coach, assistant coach, um, I've witnessed him speak to probably hundreds of uh, civic groups. Uh, people have heard of him talking to the Kansas football team. He's, he has spoke to uh, our public schools and their athletic teams, their grade schools, junior highs, high schools. Um, never once do I remember him ever being compensated, nor did he ever ask. Um, he had several opportunities after gaining rewards for being coach of the year on two occasions, but never once considered leaving. Um, he's fired twice uh, 
didn't have enough common sense to get out after he's fired and uh, just wanted to continue to serve the community. Actually, uh, raising funds uh, the first time after he's fired for the coach that preceded him. In fact, when I met him, it was on a recruiting trip. Uh, he's probably the one that talked me into coming to Kansas, and uh, he had just gotten fired uh, a couple of years earlier. Uh, he loves his community. Uh, his wife was a big part. She was one of the finest English teachers um, in, in Lawrence that's ever been here. Um, 60 years. Uh, he's certainly not uh, what you see today in coaches. He, he did not get rich uh, financially, but he certainly wasn't poor. Uh, I think this would be a, a perfect way to, to honor a man. Um, numerous uh, fundraising events, charities he's been a part of. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, I've known him pretty well. Would be glad to ask, answer any of those. There's a couple of people that have known him longer, but I appreciate everyone, uh, all of you that have heard this, and uh, for you, of course, all the things you've done. But I think it's a, it's a good, a good thing. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Janet Campbell. I'm the director of Audio Reader and Kansas Public Radio. Our address is 1120 West 11th Street, and I've worked there for 30 years. Um, we're a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week service, and um, I can tell you that it's very confusing um, to, to give directions and to try to find our studios as it is. And I, while I re respect the intent, I think this would be um, I, I strongly oppose oppose this change. If if this would happen, 11th Street would change names three times within eight blocks. So, for example, uh, we have hundreds of uh, hundreds of visitors each week, many of them elderly without GPSs, and they call. And so, if I would say, oh, to get to our studios from the east, you simply take 11th Street. But now 11th Street's going to end. Mississippi, you're going to jog a half a block and then it's going to become Don Fambro Drive and you'll go four blocks and midway through your drive it's going to change again to 11th Street and then you'll go halfway up the hill and you'll see our sign and turn. Now be careful because if you go too far 11th Street's going to end again after a half a block and divide into West Hills Terrace or as it curves it's going to become West Campus Road. So you can imagine when someone calls and they want to visit our studios or they're a prospective volunteer. It is very confusing as is, and this I think is going to, to only complicate matters. So I, as I said, I strongly oppose this and I hope that you will maybe find some other way to, to honor Coach Chambro. My name is Hank Booth, and I want to say, first of all, that I'm not here tonight uh, representing the Lawrence Chamber of Commerce. I'm representing Hank Booth as a resident of Lawrence and Douglas County for nearly all of my life and uh, serving on the KPR advisory board. I hope I don't get in trouble with the staff and uh, Janet for making these comments tonight. Um, I'm fairly sure if we had a vote of uh, folks in Lawrence, we'd probably get a pretty strong majority to get this done. I won't go over the Don Fambro story. It's legendary. We've all heard it. We've Each of us had our own personal experiences over years and years with Don. I went to school with his son, Preston, at Lawrence High School. Uh, I've gotten to know his younger son through the years, of course, with his work that he's done uh, in uh, the, the area out north and other areas as well. But I want to suggest tonight in my time that naming uh, this street also represents an honor for his beloved wife, Del. Uh, for three decades, a very tough but very fair 
an excellent English teacher at Lawrence High School. Uh, my son Andy had Mrs. Fambro for junior English, and his proudest moment, I think, was getting an A on one of her end of the semester projects. I don't think he got an A for the semester, but that one project made her A list, and that didn't happen many times. So in a, in a way, and all of the things that the families of coaches uh, and the families uh, of their, uh, and, and those extended family members, the things that they uh, do and, and those things that they accomplish individually, uh, we hear little about. But in Lawrence, Kansas, when we talk about Don Fambro, most of us who've had kids or attended Lawrence High School will always think immediately as well of Del Fambro. So in this way, we can honor a, a woman who taught, taught our kids, did a wonderful job, and also salute Del, uh, Don Fambro as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Joe Flannery. Obviously, I didn't play for Don Fambro. <laughs> Some people would say I run as slowly as I speak, but um, Don probably uh, had as much positive influence on my life as anyone. No matter what happened uh, in his career at KU, his love for Lawrence in the university never wavered, and as Hank alluded to, if you approve this sign, Don would also want you to think of Dell, his wife of 60 years. Don and Dell were both outstanding educators, and we would be so proud and inspired thousands of us whenever we looked at this sign that said Fambro Drive. As far as Janet's comment, um, I understand uh, her feelings. I, I think 11th Street um, will still remain 11th Street, especially since it's such a, a short distance between Mississippi and Missouri. Personally, I don't think it will be that confusing. I, I live uh, also in that neighborhood, and I, and I think people will understand that Fambro Drive is just uh, part of Memorial Stadium. And, and thank you for considering this, and I, and I hope you support it. Thank you. My name is Frank Barron. I teach uh, in the German department at KU. Um, we have um, a research institute and library uh, close to KPR and uh, audio reader. And so everything that uh, Janet Campbell has said applies to us. It isn't a matter of um, a very large number of people coming to us. Uh, but it is uh, a question on the one hand of principle. I think that there must be other ways to honor uh, people as, as important as, as FAMBO. But um, it's a matter of, of uh, the usefulness of such designations as 6th Street, 9th Street, and 11th Street for navigation. I mean, this is such a a uh, practical issue, and uh, for us, it is a, a question of, of giving directions. Usually it's by Missis Mississippi, and then coming up on 11th Street. It's difficult enough, um, and uh, uh, this is something that uh, also relates to a uh, concern. We have, uh, we're in the process of renovating 
uh, a small building that used to be KJHK. It's a historic building. It has been recognized as on a st historical state register. Uh, it's the oldest building on the university campus. It was built by James H. Lane. Uh, and I think that uh, this is a, a place that we would like to uh, show as a, as a very historic uh, place. And uh, uh, again, the question of, of how you get to it. And uh, I think that you should reconsider uh, doing it the way it has been uh, outlined. Thank you. Well, I didn't come here to talk about this, but I guess I have an opinion about everything. Um, I grew up at 10th and Alabama, just a block away from here. And I'm wondering if there's just another way to honor Don Fambro, the, the road that goes from 11th Street by the side of the stadium on the west side. I think if that was Don Fambro Way with a huge sign, that would do equally as well. And I'm not thinking just of right now. But 100 years from now, 200 years from now, you know, it's breaking up the streets into these small things. And who else is going to come? I mean, we already have a precedent before. Now this one, people are going to come forward with equally loved people in the community. And I just think there could be other ways to do it that won't confuse future generations. Uh, my name is Walt Houck, and uh, like Joe said, you can tell I never played for Don either. <coughs> what a great way to honor him for somebody to plug in on their GPS and see Fambro Drive. Okay, wouldn't that be great? Do we want to name a street after somebody and then hide it? So if you've got GPSs, you've got all this other stuff that you are afraid people can't find someplace, wouldn't it be a great honor for them to pull up and ask somebody, what's this Fambro thing? To me, that would be a, uh, that would be a great situation, and that's what we want to do. I travel to my grandson's Little League game, so I go in on Google, I go in on all of this stuff, and they tell me how to get to places in Shawnee Mission and Wichita and every place else. I guarantee you those directions will be picked up in Fambro. It might take a couple years, but it will be plugged in that way and this would be a great way to honor him because all of these things that people are mentioning would be there for them to see and for them to ask if they didn't know. Now secondly for Fambro, I'm, uh, I'm about as old as dirt so I'm close to what Don was and so um, for over 50 years I've known the man. I've known him as Mr. Fambro, I've known him as Coach, and finally, I knew him as Don. I'm fortunate enough to be in athletics a little bit, and uh, I handled all of the travel for the football team when Fambro coached as an assistant, as a head coach, as an assistant, as a head coach, as somebody that recruited money for the university, and finally, as all through that time, as somebody that supported <coughs> Lawrence. Do, it's just baffling to me. Uh, I have seen him in the locker room after a loss. I've seen him in the locker room after a win as a non-player. I've ridden with him in a cab when we had transportation problems on the road. I've seen him react to every situation, and I have never seen him react in a way that's disrespectful to people, to athletics, or to anything else. If we can't honor this man, there can't be a man alive that will pass away that needs to be honored. Pham was a super guy. Wasn't just in, as uh, David said, it wasn't just in the sports field. It was more outside the sports field. And if any of you ran into him at High V at breakfast in the morning and he couldn't hardly hobble in because of injuries and, and uh, replacements of joints, and everything, and he was as positive as you could be. 
I would hope that you would name this street this way. And I would hope that you would pray that it would get on everybody's GPS and it would get on everybody's directional list that wants to get to some place that's on 11th Street. Wouldn't it be fun for somebody to walk into one of these addresses on 11th Street and say, what's this thing with Fambro? Why does this break up here, break up here, and in the middle it's Fambro? What's that all about? Then you can tell the story of one of the greatest men that this city has known. Thanks. Marcy Francisco, 1101 Ohio. Um, I guess I'm here to speak out for my neighborhood. Um, I live at 1101 Ohio. Um, I um, believe this is a much better proposal than when we heard renaming Missouri Street, um, although I know that that would have been a really fun thing um, to do. Um, I'm hoping you might at least consider keeping um, the last block or half block as you um, reach Mississippi 11th. So in fact, on your GPS, you would turn at 11th, it might turn into Fambro Street, and then you would continue on 11th. I think the most confusing um, location for this would be at that intersection um, of 11th and Mississippi. I've been on the commission before. Good luck. <laughs> At least we aren't in Topeka. <laughs> Is there further public comment? Back to the commission then, or there questions, or you wanna? If I could, I'll just build on a little bit. I initially spoke with Dave about, um, what, what is this ordinance number, 8695. Um, just a little, little history. Um, I haven't talked to commissioners uh, about this. I think Mike and I had a brief conversation last meeting, but, um, uh, Sue Hack had, had given me a call a few months back and gave me a heads up that a guy, David Lawrence, might be giving me a call to talk about uh, honoring Don Fambro in some way. I know David very well. I don't know if Sue knew that at the time. But at any rate, um, I, I've been on a, a hiatus for a while. I moved away for about 20 years, so I, I missed uh, some of this. But when I first came back to town, uh, immediately when Sue said this, one, she's, she's a mentor of mine and somebody that... Uh, you know, it's a big reason that I actually got involved in the city commission here. Um, and I know she brought this up before, as uh, Senator Francisco alluded to. And uh, so I was happy to, I would have been happy to pick up the ball and, and run with it. Um, but it was easier because I had met Don when I first moved back to town through Visiting Nurses Association. I got involved with uh, their, their first, uh, what is it, Dying Dance Donate 3D, um, 3D event. And uh, Don was their spokesperson. Uh, was very cool. My son was, uh, he, he did a video that was to go in uh, DVDs for everybody to, to watch at their houses uh, on the evening of the event. And um, Don was the first person that we, uh, we did a video of, his testimony uh, for the Visiting Nurses Association. And so my son got to know him a little bit as well. And I was really, really glad that uh, he was able to, to cross somebody like that. And then, then as he's living here, he's hearing more and more about this guy who was, he would have just who knew, could have been an uncle of his or something. Great uncle, excuse me. Um, but anyway, great, great guy, very humble. And uh, my father knew him very well as well. And I, I just heard nothing but great things. As others had mentioned here, Don, was he was fired twice and he stayed. And he didn't just stay in Lawrence or live in Lawrence. I mean, he, he really was active in Lawrence. And he was as much an ambassador for Lawrence as he was for the University of Kansas. Um, so... Uh, in, in initially looking into this, David, uh, given a call uh, to the university to give a heads up that this was being proposed, um, at that time they had already st set in motion uh, Fambro Way, which is going to be the west entrance, uh, it would be the uh, northwest side of the stadium there. There's an entrance, uh, basically it's the continuance, I believe, of Missouri Street that goes on into the stadium. That is going to be Fambro Way. Um, and as we got to talking about this, we decided that it would probably be best to collaborate on this and, and do uh, dedicate both streets at the same time. So we're looking at doing this, uh, the spring game, April 28th, is the spring game this year to uh, dedicate Fambro Drive and Fambro Way. Uh, so 
the university is uh, is on board with this as well and and rather than go our separate ways on naming two different streets we thought this would be great to just do it do it all together and uh, it was great I appreciate staff's help and others that came up with the ideas of you know exactly where to to, to do this so that we weren't changing people's addresses um, to make it a bit easier I understand there may be just a little additional confusion but I have faith um, like someone said we don't want to confuse the future generations but I I have faith that they will be less confused than we are hopefully um, and they'll find their way um, on Fambro Drive so just want to give a little bit more background on that and I'll be supporting it of course <laughs> any questions works I guess is it possible to I can see the confusion that some of the speakers uh, made note of would it be possible to put if we go ahead and put the name Don Fambro Drive underneath it also have 11th Street is that is that a possibility for the continuity of the of the 11th Street or is that confusing harder to see unless you want it the same height wouldn't really want it any smaller but uh, I didn't know if I didn't know if this would be I a mean, possibility the sign, the in sign the blanks are you know we can get sign blanks as big as we want we make all kinds of different size signs so it could be done it's just an idea I don't know. seems like the people who are uh, operating uh, their uh, institutions and then homeowners have some concern about that I don't know if that's a helps clarify it a little bit because if you did tell somebody it's on 11th Street they would certainly see the 11th Street marker as well as all of us who want to see Don Bambro's name up there will recognize that as well so I don't know if that helps the situation at all mm -hmm. idea looking at that as is it a permanent arrangement or just as a temporary thinking of it as a permanent arrangement if, if it makes, yeah. makes sense to do it. I'm wondering about um, at least there at 11th in Mississippi, me where people are coming on to, I mean, are you talking about on each of the intersections going up there? Well, I would think you would want to have it on each uh, post where there's a sign that, um, so they could identify it still they're on the 11th Street route as opposed in addition to being on the, the uh, Fambro Drive <coughs> I don't want to detract from the the naming of the street but I also don't want it to be a point of confusion for people the street isn't straight too is, is the other you know is the other issue here I mean, they're talking about the reason the street changes names. Well, it's it's moving around. It's not, you know, all of our numbered streets are numbered streets, and they're they're rolling through. Uh, this numbered street happens to have campus in the in in the way, and universities uh, laid out a little differently, and and uh, and we're having to go around it. And we are, you know, this this isn't in line. The section that's 11th now is not in line with 11th Street. Uh, makes it makes a bit of a jog there. So yeah, it's just a a point. Well, I guess as, as I look at it, as, as I look at it, Vice Mayor, is that you know if we were looking at a temporary a temporary signage at 11th and Mississippi that would be able to help people you know navigate through the area and I don't know what a temporary time is there but uh, you could look at it that way I remember a couple of years ago we actually looked at an idea where uh, there was a request that came in and I think it was through Athletic Corporation about you know some uh, development that was going to happen on the east side of the station uh, stadium and we were going to be asked to look at moving 11th Street to tie it into 11th Street coming in from the east so I think that uh, um, you know, there's there's all kinds of things, you know, that's been a part of this whole issue over the last several years. So um, I just think that, uh, you know, the item that is before us is whether or not we 
think it is appropriate to change, uh, you know, that portion of 11th Street from Mississippi to Missouri Street, uh, you know, to rename it as uh, Fambro Drive. I personally believe it should happen. If it's going to take, uh, if, if, if we believe that confusion is going to be bad enough for a while, then I think that we put a marker at 11th and Mississippi. I don't believe that we probably need it at each one of the intersections, but, um, you know, to uh, help with uh, people being able to uh, get directions uh, coming from Mississippi Street, because I'm going to think that that's going to be the main entrance in looking at it. So um, I, I, I think that is a help. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, lo looking at this, when you, when you look at the map, it's important to, I think, to realize this, this is a couple of block long section right next to uh, one of the largest landmarks in, in town. And that 11th Street does not go to the east and 11th Street does not go to the west. Um, you have to jog down to catch to catch 11th uh, on down, but the, the street does not does not go through. Like, uh, therefore, I mean it. Uh, and no one addresses off of this street either. So that's I mean, if if we had a, a number of folks addressing off this, that would boy that would could be extremely confusing. But with all uh, due respect. To, to those individuals, Janet and others, I, I, and I really do appreciate that, uh, that it is challenging getting directions over there, but a lot of that is geography, um, the, the topography, I guess, versus the cartography. And, uh, you know, we're, the streets aren't straight there, and that's uh, largely a product of uh, the layout of the university and of uh, superimposed upon, this, uh, upon the city. So, I. I don't have uh, an issue with uh, with uh, the renaming of this particular section. I think it's of all the streets that we have in town, it's probably the least confusing and uh, one that we could that we could come up with uh, to make a change on. Being as no one's no one's addressing off of it, it's a few blocks long, and uh, it doesn't continue with that name um, continuously uh, in either direction. Yeah. Sir, Mayor. Uh, we're going to need to be working on a little bit on the signage anyway. We'll be in cooperation with the, the university. The sign at Mississippi and 11th <coughs> Street, which would uh, now be Mississippi and Fambro Drive, is actually a one of those KU uh, white letters on blue signs there. So we'll obviously be working with KU. The, the other thing to keep in mind is that this precedent of kind of the dual naming is not um, unheard of. We've, we've done that in some of our older neighborhoods where we have um, uh, the uh, the, the current name, and then we've got in, in smaller lettering the the old name that Henry Henry the, Street the, or the yeah town site. So that's it's not inappropriate. I think if if it's the com as opposed to maybe doing the design this evening, if, if it's the if it's the commission's wish to, to proceed with this, you can adopt the ordinance on first reading. We'll proceed with second reading here in a couple of weeks, and then I've got confidence that, that our staff can can work on a, a design solution, probably in cooperation with KU. We want to. Uh, mm -hmm. Do it so that it works with what they're going to be doing um, on Memorial, uh, n next to Memorial Stadium there at the, the Main Street kind of follow through. I think we can work on that and, and try and find ways to include uh, 11th Street in some of those, perhaps all all uh, all five of them, but at least at at uh, Mississippi and perhaps at Missouri to make it make it clear. I think we've got some some abilities to try and include that. We certainly have got a precedent where we're, we're trying to do that. And just to be clear, it's Fambro Drive. We're talking about. I don't think Vice Mayor might say Don Fambro. Just be clear. Okay. We need an emotion on this, or Stop yes, sir. First reading. So motion would be probably to direct staff to. Would that be appropriate? Uh, you would want a motion approve to approve ordinance, ordinance number eighty-six ninety-five on yep. first reading. Mayor, I'd move to approve oh, Ordinance right. 86995, renaming 11th Street from Mississippi to Missouri Street to Fambro Drive, and direct staff to uh, come up with a solution that may include uh, 11th Street in that same sign. On the, on the signage. On the signage, right. Okay. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Carter, seconded by Commissioner Amex. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?
passes 5-0. Next up, we have a request to establish no parking along the north side of 12th Street between Indiana and Mississippi Street. You don't have to go. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> And if we could move on out of the, out of the uh, room here, but before talking, I'd appreciate it. We're going to try to get on with our meeting. If we could get those doors closed, I'd appreciate it. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. At the October and November Traffic Safety Commission meetings, they heard a request to establish no parking along the north side of 12th Street west of Indiana. The request uh, came from some uh, people that are renters in the area and requesting that that, that, no, that no parking be installed because of concerns about safety, access of emergency vehicles, uh, access of sanitation vehicles, uh, delivery vehicles, any type of large vehicle in that area. Uh, there was uh, considerable discussion at both uh, October and November meetings. There were uh, some uh, people that own property in the area that were opposed the to the request, others that uh, live there that were in favor of the request. The uh, fire chief did support the request at one of the meetings. And, <clears throat> excuse me, at the November meeting, the uh, commission did approve a motion on a five to three vote to remove the parking along the north side. The uh, three people that uh, were opposed to it, uh, one had concerns about residents that had lived there for a number of years being opposed to it. They had concerns about there not being consensus within the neighborhood. And then one had a concern about taking uh, parking away from uh, people that pay taxes. Uh, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Uh, questions? Op opinions from fire and medical will be the one that I've got. Do we have, what, what do we have from? Did you relate the fire chief letter that was? Yeah, the, fi the fire chief uh, did, was at the uh, October meeting. Uh, right now, if they have to uh, get down into the area, they can't get through along the north side. They have to go down the south side against uh, traffic on that one-way uh, pair in there. And uh, if there was a fire towards the middle of that block where the parking occurs, it would be very difficult for them to reach over uh, parked vehicles to get to those structures. Is, is that uh, street a normal width street? It actually the street is very wide, but it has a median in it also. I, I guess I meant one lane, one each direction. Yeah, and each side only has about 15 feet of width for movement of traffic on each side of that median. So if you take up, you know, six feet or so for parking, that only leaves about nine foot for uh, vehicles to get through. Any other questions? Thank you. Is there public comment on this item? Yeah, please just step up to that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Diana Robinson. I live in Prairie Village, Kansas. Uh, I was the one that brought the concern to this issue of the parking immediately when my son moved in here. It was so narrow to go down that one side. Um, we've known three or four people who have already had their mirrors swiped off because of the narrowness of it. The cars aren't parking within 12 inches of the curb, um, so that leaves even less space. You can't move over because the median is about that high with a rock wall, so you either like 
tear your car up this way or tear your car up that way. It's illegal to go into the cul-de-sac backwards, but at times you have to. I mean, we have a huge pickup and we can't get da down through there safely. And um, when I started this issue, I talked to people in the city works and like everybody I called said the street's a nightmare. The trash trucks have to back down. The plows have to back down. They can't even service the north side of the street. And so when I started my little crusade here about this issue, um, everybody came to, wanted to kind of pass the buck until I got to the fire department and they said, we'll take a look at it. And Mark Bradford and Jim King both were very concerned when they looked and it's like he said, they came and spoke at the meeting, Mark did, and he just said that if they had to fight the fire in that part of town where, this, where the you know, houses are old, they fight the fires differently and that they would not be able to reach any of those windows with the ladder and the pumper truck because it was too short going over the median and the parked cars and that the outcome of a fire fighting it from the south side of the cul-de-sac would definitely have different results than fighting it on the north side where you could pull up in front of the houses. I I'm just concerned. I just think it's a safety issue that maybe hadn't been addressed obviously for years but just because it's always been like that doesn't make it right and I understand the parking is a problem but the house to the east of Sean's house, there's no guarantee that the, those people that live there are going to get those parking spaces anyway. It's, it's you know, first come, first serve. Um, it's just been a hassle. They can't even turn um, to the west on their street. If they're coming down, headed south, turning right, people are parking into the intersection of 12th and Mississippi. Doesn't seem to be monitored. They're having people park in front of their house where there's no parking. And it just continually going on down the street where there's no parking and no one's monitoring it. So it would be my wish, like I said, it's always been the safety of everybody who ever lives on that street that you know the city adopt or you know go along with the referral of the Traffic Safety Commission and the fire chief and either one day maybe remove the median where, where people can have parking. That to me would be the most logical thing is just get rid of the media and plow it down so that you could have the best of both worlds. But for now, I think safety has to outrule six parking spots on that street. So um, if you do go ahead and adopt this, I would, I would hope that the city would, would let the owners of like those businesses know that the changes have been made, maybe a letter sent to them telling them that a change has been implemented because if no one's going to monitor and aggressively you know follow through with this parking it's just going to continue because kids are in a hurry people are in a hurry they just want to park it wherever they can so anybody have any questions for me thank you okay. thank you Good evening. Um, again, I really didn't plan to uh, speak tonight, but sometimes it just feels like um, there should be a broad representation of what some of the facts are. At any rate, uh, my name is Carol Von Tersch. I live in this block. I've lived there for 30 years. I have always driven down the north side of the street. I have never, ever not been able to make that turn from either direction off of Indiana to go down to my house. I have never ever not been able to get through and I have never seen anybody sideswiped until this past year. So um, I sort of personally feel like this request is coming from the five young men who live in the house on the bottom of the hill and because it's not convenient for them uh, but one thing I did want to say in response to the, to the presentation on the part of the city staff, I was at the October meeting and I did testify and there wasn't anyone at that meeting in favor of taking the parking off except the fire chief 
and the five young men who made this request. I just want to clarify that. That not, was not accurately um, reported. Uh, personally, I don't care a whole lot one way or another whether there's parking there or not because I have enough parking in my driveway for four people, so you know that's not a big uh, personal issue for me. Although it's a lot harder for people to come and visit if they can't park in the street and they have to you know, walk a couple of blocks to come and visit. Um, but again, as I say, I could go either way on that issue. Uh, if the fire chief feels that that's the best thing for us to uh, have that fire protection, I'd go along with that. Thank you very much for the opportunity to express myself. Yes, question. Carol. Question. Yes. Carol, is, is there no parking on the south side? There is no parking on the south side so that emergency vehicles can come down on the south side. Okay. That's what it looked like on the picture here. Mm -hmm. Although there's uh, and I was a little surprised at the fire chief's uh, uh, opinion on that because there, uh, there have been uh, some fires in the area in the 30 years or so that I've lived there. Uh, my next door neighbors had a fire some years ago and they didn't bring the fire truck down. They just leave it up in the intersection um, on Indiana and 12th. And I just assume that's how it would be handled now. But other emergency vehicles just come down on the south side. I can attest to that. I had an ambulance at my house at least five times in a period of, of two years. And uh, you know that's the reason why the parking was taken off on the south side. Um, but it's always been left on the north side because there's one property on the north side that has absolutely no parking. And uh, so I don't know where those uh, tenants will go if they can't park, you know, in the block where they live. Is, is that the house that's furthest west? Uh, the house that's furthest west is the one that's occupied by the five young men. Okay, which, in which it's house the next. It the, it's the next one up the hill. It's a triplex. Okay. And it has three parking spaces in front of the triplex. Um, a few years ago, before the hotel was built, most of the uh, traffic was uh, in that block was students uh, seeking a free place to park. Since the hotel is there, we don't have that student traffic, but what we have now is the hotel employees that are parking in that block. And I think that uh, that's probably a little more of an aggravation for uh, some of the tenants who live on the, um, um, on the north side of the 1200 block. Again, it's, it's, I go either way with it because I have four parking spaces in my driveway and so it's not a big issue for me. Um, I would just, um, would like everyone who lives in the area to be sensitive to the needs and the, uh, the values of the other people who live there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further public comment on this? Back to the commission then. Any uh, questions? Question for staff. Is in that center median there, I'm looking at uh, the overhead uh, view of the street and the parking. Is there a, uh, can you drive through or can you pass through the center of that median in the middle of the median? Is that, no? <coughs> it looks like you can on this. Yeah, about halfway through there is a small break in there where you can make that turn uh, depending on the size right. of your vehicle. Right in the middle there, so. Yeah. No. I don't think you're pulling the fire truck through there. Though. No, I know. <laughs> Get rid of the medium, we can yeah. find a few more parking spaces. What for is the, the reason area. for the median there? What's? It's uh, it's always been there. It is uh, historic, according to information sure. from uh, Planning and Development Services. You okay. David, how many parking spaces are there on the north side of that street? There's about six right six. now. Six. 
Okay. Sunday morning I went up through there and it was extremely tight um, because as uh, one of the people said, I don't think anybody was parked within a foot of the of the um, um, oh, the curb line there. So it, it was pretty close. My little pickup's fine, but uh, I was just wondering um, if there was any, any cars parked farther down to the uh, west there. The, you know, there's no way that you could get anything through there. But um, yeah, I, th I think the big thing here is is that the, the center median um, is, is wide enough that it takes, you know, some of the traffic uh, or, uh, you know, that, that aisle way through there. And, you know, that concerns me from the standpoint of um, uh, emergency services being able to get, and specifically the fire truck, you know, one of our fire trucks in there to take care of uh, folks if they need help. Um, so I, I just don't think that you could get it down that way. Carol, if... if could I ask Carol sure. question, please? Yeah. When the response that we have had uh, for a fire truck that has come down that street, you said that they they always come on the south side. Did I understand that? Not um, fire trucks. Emergency vehicles, ambulances. Okay. Um, they use the south side. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, but do you know that's north side seems real narrow to people who don't come there all the time <laughs> like you said how, how tight it was it was, it was uh, for me <laughs> well my uh daughters and my grandsons all drive big pickups and they come down there and through that center medium and into my driveway and um have they, they have never not been able to get through But, you know, like I said, I can go either way on it. Be I, I know that it would have a marked effect on the property on the north side that's in the center of the street um, because the, he has absolutely no parking at all and it's a triplex. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. or comments will we ever get past parking in the Orient <laughs> we're still trying to get a couple of feet from uh, from the Memorial Stadium we're <laughs> we're we <laughs> we haven't gone very far this evening <laughs> I guess my, my one thought I had was I mean if it's really if it's just a safety issue um, then I think it's <coughs> It'd be a no-brainer for me. I, I didn't really understand the 5-3 vote because Traffic Safety Commission, there were a couple of votes that were voted. One didn't feel like it was consensus. The neighbors and another felt like we shouldn't take spots from taxpaying people. But those aren't safety. I thought that that commission was to validate whether it was a safety issue or not. So a little wasn't that, that helpful. Um, I mean, we've got the police chief saying it's a safety issue the majority of the commission saying it's a safety issue and at least two of the three no votes didn't give you know didn't even address the safety issue with their vote they, they voted on something unrelated or reason unrelated so you know if that's all we have to go on as long as that medians there I'm, I'm, I'm believe I'd have to support the vote of the concurrence or, yeah yeah I'll agree with that the, the thought I have too is if indeed curbside parking is creating a safety issue at this location, it's creating that same safety issue all over town. I mean, if, if you can't, I presume from what everyone has said that it's because you can't get the ladder truck over to a bedroom window because it, it's located too far away from the distance that they would have to travel down. but seems to me like you've got that issue uh, in lots of different areas but in this particular case vice mayor you have a center median down through okay, the so only you can't, it the only other, gives you nine feet of space to get down right, through so there. in the other other places without a center median you'd have the center of the street yeah you would have the street to work with it's the a question little tighter. The, the you know the, the the real thing here is is that whether or not you know the safety issues are going to take precedence over everything else because you can't get you know an emer you know the 
the big ladder truck down this street to be able to uh, provide service in the event of a fire to those those three properties that are in that area. Um, well, it's amazing we're talking about parking and you know the need for more parking and we're considered taking it away. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be touching the medians. No, I don't think so. Not this time. Questions, comments? Motions? Mayor? I have a, I have a question. Um, sure. When did we prohibit parking on the south side? Anyone do an investigation on that, and how long has the South? Uh oh, we got we got Girl. historical accuracy. The request went to the city after I bought the house thirty years ago. So you requested no parking. Well, on the my south husband side? did at the time <laughs> okay. uh, because of emergency vehicles yeah. to um, to get them down there. Okay. Um, at so any rate. it was a citizen's request, landowner's request. Yes. And your concern was safety at the time. Yes. Yes. So how long has that been, Carol? Thirty years ago. Glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> so at that time we would have had the same median, the same cul-de-sac, and there's no way we could have gotten anything done around that. I can't imagine anyway. Bucket Brigade. Yeah. At that point. Motion. Shoot. Mayor, I'd move that we approve the uh, request to establish no parking along the north side of 12th Street between Indiana and Mississippi. Second. Motion uh, made by Vice Mayor Shum, seconded by Commissioner Carter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Next, our last step uh, this evening, where we requested some additional clarification um, <coughs> at the conclusion of, uh, of our meeting last time. And we have an answer. Good evening. Mayor and Commission Scott McCullough with the Planning Office. Last week, the Commission was prepared to initiate a text amendment to increase the minimum gross structure size eligible to receive a, uh, a reduced parking standard for con congregate living and multi-dwelling uses. However, the Commission requested information on whether attic space was included in the data presented by staff, data which reflected the potential impact to the Oriad neighborhood relative to parking. As the memo reflects, attic space that is accessed by a fixed stairway is included in the living area data used to calculate the structure size. This by and large validates the research exercise of trying to understand the impact to the neighborhood and would support last week's proposal to use 4,500 square feet as the structure size that would yield approximately 4.5% of Oread parcels eligible for the standard. The details will need to be worked out through the text amendment process, but a motion <coughs> consistent with last week's discussion is available for your consideration tonight, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the uh, packet. Great. Thanks for the, uh, thank you for the clarification on that. Any other questions? Is this, I think the, the, the question was whether or not we, uh, we, we knew the impact of what we were what we were prepared to initiate, and I think this answers the question. So, one question of staff, if I could. Yeah, Scott, since this is uh, uh, an, an amendment that's going to affect uh, properties all over the community, and you and I had um, you know, a short discussion before the meeting, do you know of other places in the community that that this amendment may affect, uh, not individual par properties, but different areas that may be affected because of size of lot and size of structure? Um, Commissioner Amex, we haven't done an exhaustive analysis in other areas like we have Oread, so I can't say that we know of a specific parcel outside of Oread. We can assume that there are some um, 
some established neighborhoods that could have very similar development patterns that that this would be applied to yes okay but we don't know of any other other part of the community where we're going to have a large impact uh, of, of potential requests I think the, uh, hist Wait. historically we have not had that pattern it has primarily been in the Oread neighborhood but there are several boarding houses um, outside of Oread as well okay so as we look in the information that you provided for us that the uh, 20 addresses that had been singled out as uh, potential sites uh, where, where boarding house where where this tax amendment is uh, these properties going to meet the requirements of this tax amendment what happens to other properties uh, they can go ahead and make the request a boarding house as this is an uh, would be applied citywide if they're eligible if they meet the two prong criteria for structure size and lot size then they would be eligible to receive the reduced parking standard as well if this tax amendment is initiated we'll attempt to do the, the kind of a similar exercise in other areas of pockets of REM uh, zoned property and bring that forward with the text amendment other questions comments Could one more as as we look at um, um, you know the the Oria plan and, and and the fact that we're going to develop these overlay uh, district areas what is going to happen uh, as we get into the future a little bit as we set up these districts and, and what what that's going to look like as as it pertains to boarding houses well, they will certainly be a component of the design guideline planning exercise so that there may be more even more specific standards related to how a uh, property is converted to a congregate living facility it may be rest additional restrictions on the number of bedrooms on the addition size on rel related to parking it may open up and make some areas of Oriad more flexible than what the current code is it's going to be the intent of the overlay districts is that they are intended to be sort of a very specific to the area set of zoning guidelines and standards that are meant to address very specific context issues and so um, it, it will likely have an effect on this amendment as it goes through at the end of the day it, it may be that a, a completely different set of standards affects boarding houses in the Oread district If I could build on that, yeah. Go ahead. So it's essentially, um, you know, as it stands right now, if we just go on the square footage, then they are where they are based on their sizes. And they may or may not really make sense. I mean, as we actually go to plan the neighborhood with over overlay districts and whatnot, um, that's where we get to take a good look with neighbor input and as, as well as the investment community as far as where it really makes most sense for the neighborhood because we're looking at uh, quality of life issues as well. And there, there's blocks that may not have uh, you know the right larger home or whatever on that particular block that makes sense for uh, another boarding house and so the overlay district then um, kind of supersedes we get to be very intentional right now we're kind of saying we, we put a limit on it by saying 20 net new but they're really just kind of out there where we may or may not necessarily want to see another boarding house whereas the next level of planning on this will be to say here's the spots and here's what they got have to look like with design guidelines etc that's, that's my understanding anyway so then is right. this text amendment that that we're looking at tonight that is going to be dealing with the square foot uh, of these properties is this just going to give us kind of a holding time until we get to the overlay district areas that will be established it, it will either give us a, a time to to hold it or it will end up being the preferred choice as the overlay districts are established and the base zoning standards are um, accepted and adopted as such my guess is, is we'll, we'll establish some amount of precedent and, and we'll carry some weight with it with the overlay district but then hopefully the overlay district has much broader scope they'll take a look at the whole uh, the whole neighborhood and the effects of of, of any sort of boarding house and parking issues and, and they'll be able to have a lot uh, 
you know, they may make some changes, but I do, but I do think that it's uh, probably is going to have a little bit of impact. So as we look at this right now, Mayor, that this item would go before Planning Commission March? Probably March. March, back to us in April. Yes, sir. Uh, the overlay districts to us in? Uh, the, the fall, fall of this year. That's right. right. We just we just got approval to get our consultant on board okay. tonight, so we're going to get busy on that and get that going in spring and summer. Yeah, so potentially, yeah, we're we're talking about a few months worth of you know, this in effect before before we have an overlay district, but uh, and potentially there's a chance, you yeah. know, depending on on time and all of this, this commission may not decide that issue. True. True. Yeah, because that's going to be the first time it overlays come to us is in the fall. I mean, that's going to be, that's the big project. That's kind of what I was saying is that. You don't think that's going to be on consent? Yeah, this is. <laughs> but we can put this portion to bed for now. Yeah. Look, yeah, delay for now. <laughs> okay. Good enough. It's right up on the, I think. That, uh, that would be the entire motion that would initiate it for us. It's a public speaking opportunity. It's a whole speech. I'm happy to just give that to Jonathan if you want to okay. summarize. Second. Motion to initiate text amendment made by Vice Mayor Shum, second by Commissioner Carter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Passes 4-1. Commissioner Dever in dissension. Very good. Is there public comment of a general nature this evening? If not, we'll move on to future agenda items. Dave? So meeting next week. Following week, uh, we've got the uh, memorandum that follows up on earlier discussion in regards to the use of synthetic turf. Okay. Right. issue is and uh, we'll probably have a number of other items for that um, that's gonna be on the February 7th City Commission agenda we'll probably have a number of other items since we're skipping a week great we're gonna have the um, I think we think we're in pretty good shape on the a contract for the master planning on the farmland property and working on that uh, Chuck and Matt and Scott and I have been uh, negotiating with Bartlett and West to make sure that we're getting all of the different elements in that contract um, so we'll probably have that. Probably that should be ready with the consent agenda if that's where it needs to go. Um, and uh, we're working on a number of other projects as well. Great. Commission items. Calendar. No meeting. Do. Do, do you have? Do we have the youth of the year, the Boys and Girls Club youth of the year on the calendar yet? Or has that Commissioner, been I'm not aware of that. You want me to check on to? that? Um, yeah, if we could. I, Do you I know mean, when that is? Oh. We may not have gotten it. It's, I want to say it's the. Uh, April. It's February. Um, is it? Oh shoot! It is, is that a it Boys is and Girls Club? Yes. March. Boys and Girls Club sponsors that. That's a. I'll make sure and get it to you. Okay, that'd be great. Tomorrow. Thanks. Great. Yeah, we'll get that. Get that on there. Big deal. Good. Anything else, calendar-wise? Don't believe so. If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion made. Second. Sir. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. We are adjourned. Thank you.